Hi, I'm Alex Anders, and this is Bisexual Real Talk. And you might be noticing that I am wearing a face mask. There's a reason for that. It's because I will be offering you a discount code for any bisexual merchandise on Teespring that I have right now, including the masks, including the Powered By t-shirts and a few others, and sweatshirts and towels and whatnot, all in bisexual colors. Uh, if you would like to get a 20% discount, you can go to uh, you can go to Teespring, the link in the description below, and use the discount code no more 2020 to get 20% off anything at the Teespring store. So I just want to let you know about that. And in this video today, I will be doing a few things. I'll be giving you some updates on what I've been up to. And also, I'll be answering one of your viewer questions. So first, an update on what I've been doing. So it's that time of the year when I take time off. So I, as of like the 15th, have been taking time off and I'll be taking time off my writing and publishing until sometime the beginning of next year. This is always a time when I'm able to reconsider my career and reconsider what I'm doing and see whether there's any like major changes I want to make. Last year, I decided to make a major push in advertising, which has worked out fantastically and allowed me to do a lot of other opportunities. Uh, along the lines this year, I have started translating again my books into Italian and Spanish. Italian, my translations, apparently there, wasn't very, there weren't very many MMF bisexual romances in Italian, if any at all. So they've actually been selling extremely well in Italy. Uh, it's my biggest market right now, this month. Crazy Italy, who would have thought Italy? Uh, and my Spanish sales have just, like I've just started releasing in Spanish and that's been doing, going pretty well as well. So that's what I've been up to. Um, but also in terms of, you know, reevaluating career and stuff. And I like to ask you guys this. So I've been thinking that I should maybe switch subgenres because the reason why I started writing MMF Bisexual Romance, first A, I love it. I love it. Uh, and also because it was very popular a couple years ago in 2017 when I started, when I switched to MMF romances, it was what was dominating the bisexual romance charts. But I've noticed that something shifted. So now I have a question of whether or not I should shift with it to what's popular because, you know, you got to change with the times. So I'm going to ask you this. And I post a, a poll on my community channel, which you guys might have seen the thread, uh, the thread might have answered. But if you haven't answered, maybe put in the, in the comment section below. My question is, if you are a reader, or if you were to read a romance novel, what would you be more likely to read? Would you be more likely to read an MMF romance where two guys and a girl uh, create a family? Or B, uh, a romance between two bisexual men who um, are struggling with their feelings as a bisexual? Or C, no matter who is in the romances, you wouldn't read a romance. So A, B, or uh, C, A being MMF bisexual romances about um, uh, males and female, uh, two males and a female falling in love or creating a family and falling in love. B, MMF stories, gay romance stories or male male stories about two bisexual men um, struggling with their feelings or C, you just wouldn't read it at all. So if, if you can answer that, I'd love to know because I'm trying to decide whether or not I should make this major switch and switch from MMF bisexual romances to MMM, MM stories. So that's that. Also, on my break, what I've decided to do since now, like we're in quarantine, what am I going to do? I'm in lockdown. I can't go anywhere. I can't travel. I can't do anything. So I have a lot of time to kill. So I think what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be answering more of your questions. I think next week I'm going to like record maybe six, maybe seven replies to your questions because the questions are now starting to pile up. Um, and then release them like every week for the next like maybe month or two. Uh, and go that way. So if you have a question, get it to me soon because, you know, once I get this block or record this block, I'm not going to record it probably another for a little while. Um, so if you have any questions, send it to me soon. Um, also, I think what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing that video I talked about previously very briefly, which is the video about what made you bisexual. Like, what do the science say right now? What's our best information on what makes a person bisexual? I think I'm going to be recording that sometime this week as well to kind of kill all the extra time I have because, you know, I live by myself and it's holiday season, so I can't go anywhere. I can't do anything. 
So basketball, VR headsets, and, you know, recording videos. That's what I'm going to be doing. Anyway, so uh, once I've gotten that out of the way now, um, I'm going to talk about today's question, or at least today's email, and answer this question. So the email says, Hi, Alex. Well, hello. Thank you so much for having a platform that allows for a real conversation uh, about what it means to be bisexual. Your videos and podcasts have helped me so much in my process of realizing who I am and figuring out how to navigate the LGBT community as a new bisexual. I am a 17-year-old uh, girl from a southern U.S. state with very conservative parents. My question and the reason I'm writing this email has to do with media and outside influences and whether or not this can make a person think that they are bisexual. This question stems from a lot of things my conservative, non-supportive parents have said to me. Let me give you some background. So I started thinking I might be bisexual at the end of my sophomore year of high school when I was 16. I had been watching a show, Riverdale, where uh, there is a lesbian relationship between two of the main characters. I had never felt before felt the way I did when watching the couple together. And this was very confusing to me. Around the same time, I started having dreams of myself kissing girls. Not any girls in particular, like my friends, etc. Just nondescript females. I remember waking up wishing that it was real and sad that the dream was over. It was after all of this that I began to have thoughts that I might have a crush on my best friend, who was a girl. With all of these feelings welling up inside of me, it was a very stressful time especially since I knew that my parents would not support me if I came out because they had already blatantly stated to me as a child that they did not support gay people and the LGBT community because of their Christian faith. I continued to watch Riverdale and felt, well, to put it bluntly, really turned on by the lesbian relationship. I decided that I must be bisexual because I was experiencing attraction to women now as well as men. In terms of my attraction to men, I had already had a few boyfriends and kissed a few guys, so I had already established my attraction to men. As I started realizing I might be bisexual, I had the opportunity to kiss a few girls and it felt really great, so I felt like I had confirmed my attraction to women too. I hid my bisexuality from my parents until fall of my junior year. It was painful to hold in, it in from my parents, and it caused me to feel angry towards them because they, they were the reason that I had to hide an important part of myself. And I never really decided to formally come out to them. I actually just blurted out that I was bisexual one night when I was arguing with them. Once I was out to my parents, we had numerous long discussions where they would try to explain to me their reasons for why they thought it was wrong and why they thought that I was just going through a phase. My mom would remind me of when I was younger and all of the crushes I had on guys and how I was boy crazy. None of their arguments really ever bothered me or seemed viable against my bisexuality except for one. The one that got under my skin and made me question my sexuality was that the shows and media that I was surrounding myself with could be influencing my sexuality. Now I am a senior, and since coming out as bisexual, I have only increased my intake of LGBTQ content. I listen to podcasts about the community, watch shows with lesbian storylines, and read books with gay characters. As I've increased my intake of this type of content, I feel my attraction to women is stronger and that I like the idea of a man less and less. Now, there, the, there are days when I do feel more attracted to men, but then there are days when I am more attracted to women. My question, and what I'm looking for advice on is, do you think that watching this type of media and surrounding myself with lesbian storylines and relationships have made me think that I am bisexual? Do you think that the media could have that type of power over a person's sexuality? Or do you think that my attraction to women has always been there? I just 
didn't realize it. And then once I did, I started to fully embrace it and realize it. Where am I? And realize it. I just have to have this fear that I am wrong about my sexuality and that I'm going to have lived a large period of my life saying that I'm queer and bisexual only to realize later in my life that I'm not and that I'm actually straight. Or what if I end up realizing that I'm um, not bisexual, but I'm actually lesbian? I'm just worried about getting my sexuality wrong. Sorry if this email was confusing, and I hope that it all makes sense. I have uh, spent so much time pondering my sexuality and trying to figure it out, so it would be nice to have an outside perspective to see what you think of my question. Thank you, and stay cooler, M. Well, you stay cooler too, M. So this is a great question, and um, I think it was very important for us to kind of discuss this. So let's take... Uh, before actually, before I kind of answer the question specifically, I'm going to remind you guys of something, which is I did a video called Am I Bisexual Quiz? And in that video, you know, it, it was for determining whether or not a person is bisexual. And I talk very specifically about the technique to find out, answer this question, which is to ask yourself whether or not members of more than one gender spike your dopamine, whether or not there's people that cause you to like uh, respond like you do to like a cookie, a good cookie or a good cake, like that kind of like rush feeling, that, that feeling of wanting to be around them more. Are there people, males, females, non-binary people, trans people, are there more than one, or, per, or people from more than one of those groups that cause you to feel that spike of dopamine. That's how you determine whether or not you're bisexual, not anything else. That very specific thing there. So now having been reminded of that, now let's answer the questions that M has uh, presented. So the first question she asks is, do you think that watching this type of, me um, type of media and surrounding myself with lesbian storylines and relationships have made me think that I am bisexual? Yes and no. Yes, in the sense that perhaps if these, if these things weren't around, you wouldn't have gone there yet. Uh, however, do I believe that from what you've stated, that you would never have gone there if not for the contents around you? No, I'm sorry. So if you were, like if I, as I just said, what makes a person bisexual is whether or not dopamine is spiked in the brain. You can't fake that. There are a lot of people watching the TV show Riverdale and they're watching that lesbian relationship and they just kind of go, nice, that's very nice, very sweet, it's interesting storyline, whatever else. But it doesn't make them want to go out and kiss a woman. So the fact that, uh, that it made you think that means that you have a predisposition to think that way. Because believe me, although you might, you, know, you might surround yourself with a bunch of people and they all might have the same response to you and it might make you think that everyone has this response, they really, really don't. There are people out there who are legitimately heterosexual and they have no feelings at all for members of the same gender. And there are people who are homosexual who have no feelings of uh, people of the same gender. And just to remind you again, the way a heterosexual feels is very specific. Do you know that feeling you have when you are uh, like thinking about someone, let's say, let's say in a 110 year old man with no teeth, uh, and let's just call it like that, a 110 year old man with no teeth. How do you feel when you think about a 110 year old man with no teeth? Are you sexually attracted to them? Do you think, oh, I wanna kiss them? Do you think anything along those lines? No, you don't. Because you have no, you have zero attraction towards them. That is how a heterosexual feels about a person of the same gender. So if you're saying that maybe I'm heterosexual, then I ask you this. Do you have that sort of feeling for someone of the same gender? If you have more than that feeling, then that means that you are not a heterosexual. And if you have more than that feeling than for someone of a different gender, that means you're not homosexual. So yeah, as much as 
it could influence you to think, to be more open to the idea that you are bisexual. The media can't turn you bisexual, but it can turn your attention in that area. So the next question you ask is, do you think that the media could have that type of power over a person's sexuality? So could watching a TV show turn a person bisexual? No, it cannot turn a person bisexual using the definition that I've said, because that's brain wiring. Your brain is just wired to spike dopamine in certain areas. Some people's brains are wired some way, some people's brains are wired another way. Now, could the media make a, a very uh, easily influenced person think they're bisexual? Yes, because, you know, media is influential. People, friends are influential. Parents are influential. Teachers are influential. So the media has just as much of an ability to, to make a person believe something as anything else. So yes, there are probably people out there who are thinking they are bisexual, who aren't bisexual, simply because they saw something on TV or they read a book or something like that. But I, for you, I'm sure that might even make you a little more insecure. But again, I go back to the fact of asking the question, do you feel spikes of dopamine in your brain when you think of people of different genders? Not every member of that gender, but anyone in that gender. Because I can guarantee you, for a heterosexual, there is no one of the same gender, like an actual heterosexual. There is no one that spikes dopamine more than that of a friend. There's no one that a heterosexual wants to have sex with or wants to make out with. Once you have that feeling you are no longer a heterosexual, you are a bisexual, and there are millions, hundreds and hundreds of millions, if not billions of people out there who are really heterosexual. And if you're not one of them, then you are not one of them. So to answer the question, yes, the media could influence a person who is very uh, easily influenced. So the younger a person is, the more likely they are to think they're bisexual when they're not. Um, but again, uh, the media can't rewire your brain and make you have dopamine spikes because of someone of the same gender. Next question. Uh, this is just you asking or affirming. Uh, or do you think that my attraction to women has always been there? I just didn't realize it. And then once I did, I started to fully embrace it and realize it. Yeah, I think that's probably the case. If you're saying that you're dreaming of kissing girls at night and then you wake up and you're like disappointed the dream's over, that's, that's a sure sign that you are 100%, without a question, dopamine spiked by women. Because if a heterosexual had that same dream, they would wake up terrified and just like horrified of that idea and think really negative things about themselves because of it. Not, they wouldn't want the dream to have been real. So you, you can rest assured that yes, clearly the wiring was always there and it just you were just waiting for whatever it was to trigger it. If it wasn't Riverdale, it would have been something else and you're simply now embracing it and like really enjoying it. So uh, the last part of your questions is, I just have this fear that I am wrong about my sexuality and I'm doing going to have lived a large period of my life saying that I'm queer and bisexual only to realize later in my, in my life that I'm not and that I'm actually straight or lesbian. You know what? That's a real thing. That is a real fear. That is something that I would say every single bisexual has gone through. Because if you remember another of my videos, which is the five stages of bisexuality, the stage two is doubt, which means that in order to get further along with your understand, your embracing of your own bisexuality, you have to go through doubt. You absolutely have to go through doubt in order to go to the next stage, which is embracing it. So uh, yeah, the doubt you're having is actually reaffirming for me that you are bisexual more than anything else because it is such a common, uh, such a common thing when you are bisexual to go through that stage. So yeah, um, if you, I don't, I understand it's a fear that you have that you might be choosing wrong. But I go back to asking yourself, you know, do members of multiple genders spike your dopamine? And if the answer is yes, there are women who spike your dopamine and there are at least a few guys who spike your dopamine then you can rest assured that you will have experiences like most people, which is, you know what? You're gonna go through long phases, maybe, where you're only attracted to one gender. 
you're gonna go, you're gonna like right now you're embracing all this LGBTQ content, which means you're probably starting to lean even move further towards women. Very natural. Uh, and then after some time, it might even be years, you'll decide, you know what? That was good and all, but I'm kind of missing the, the energy of a man. And then you might focus on men for a little while, maybe a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months. This is a very, very normal process for a bisexual. We often have phases where we go, where we are more attracted to one gender and then we're more attracted to the other gender. There's a lot of us. There's some of us who are just always more attracted to one gender. And there's some of us who are always 50-50 no matter what. But more likely than not, it'll be, you know, phases of this attraction, phases of that attraction. But just because you are going through those phases does not mean you're no longer bisexual. It just means that you are like the rest of us. So I hope that was helpful and I hope that answers your question. Uh, and again, I'd like to remind you, if you are interested in picking up any b cool bisexual merchandise, like this face mask, uh, like this Powered By t-shirt, um, you can go to Teespring in the link below and use the coupon code NOMORE2020 to get 20% off um, any of your purchases at Teespring. So yeah, uh, please go and check that out. And more than anything, uh, have a happy and safe holiday season and you can expect probably next week and for the next few weeks afterwards to see um more of my videos answering a lot more of your questions send me any questions if you want to slip them in under the wire for this batch of questions i'll be answering and yeah until next time stay cooler my bisexual friends stay cooler bye